Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome to the Ramble. We go until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States. That's Eastern uh, Daylight Time out there on the west coast. It's 7 o'clock. You guys are just seeing the sun go down, right? Got a while before the sun goes. It's dark here. So Anyway, it's always dark here. I'm that depressed. Anyway, how are you? Have a cup of coffee. Uh, on uh, on Friday nights, our special guest uh, is my wife, uh, Marjorie. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, she's not here. Uh, she has gone with her girlfriend up to Vermont, where we usually go together, but this was like a little extra time for her to go up there. And I wasn't invited. It was a girl's weekend. Okay. So, uh, is that sexist? Can I sue? Uh, can I start a Me Too thing on this uh, that I didn't get to go? Anyway, I wasn't uh, uh, allowed uh, to go. And uh, uh, so here I am uh, just all by myself. Nobody to talk to. Uh, can't yell at her. Can't fight with her. People love it when we do, but I, I have something else I'm going to run here in its place, or at least for a couple of minutes. Uh, it'll take about 13 minutes, this thing I'm going to run. I was going to do, I, I'm going to put it together. I was going to do a montage and play it tonight of a Girlfriend and all the times at Costco she's made jokes about Depends. You know, she, there's this, they have this whole big giant this aisle with a, just a giant display of Depends. I guess there are a lot of people pissing their pants who go to Costco. And, um, you know, Depends are adult diapers, right? And uh, so every time we go buy that, she would say, hey, Alex, you need your Depends? Or she would take a whole box and put it in the, uh, in the cart and meet up with me and go, I got your Depends for you, Alex. And uh, she did this on any number of occasions, and every time she did it, I somehow, I, I went back and I looked at a lot of old videos that I had on my phone, because I tried, finally decided, you know, to clear out photos and videos from my phone that really sucked and had no basis for being there in the first place. So I, uh, uh, I took all these, and I saw them all, I put them in on its own, their own folder, so I have them now. And I'm going to make up a montage of all the times she's done this, but I, I haven't done it. I was going to do it for tonight, but I just felt too lazy, okay? So anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, you know, uh, what is exciting in my life? Nothing is exciting in my life. Um, the only thing is, is that uh, I'm finally, I finally made an uh, appointment with a physical therapist. See, I'm getting to that age, folks, where I, you know, physical therapist becomes your personal friend. So I had to find a per, uh, physical therapist. I had these numb feet for like, they've gotten number and number over the over about a four-year period. Although they haven't gotten that worse than they were. And some days they're terrible, and other days there's no problem, hardly any problem at all. So my uh, doctor went and he took some X-rays. And he found that I have arthritis on my spine and it's pinching a nerve. He could actually see that. So he found the pinched nerve and uh, he is sending me to physical therapy to see over the next two months if a physical therapist can somehow minimize the, the pain or whatever. And I said to him, well, if that doesn't work, what do we go to? He says, plan B. I said, what's plan B? He said, we'll worry about that when we get there. But I don't know what plan B is. Maybe, maybe a little operation, something like that. Anyway, so I have to find a physical therapist. And I have this physical therapist. I really liked him. He's terrific. He was the guy who worked on my torn meniscus. And a while, every now and then, it bothers me. For the most part, he got it to minimize itself. 
So I'm hoping that this same guy will do wonders on my L5 lumbar vertebrae or wherever that. How do I get our? I get arthritis in your hand, don't you? How do you get it in your spine? Anyway, so I uh, 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 so I called up and and decided to go see this guy. I'm going to see him next Thursday. Have him start working on me and see what happens. He, I, I, he's near my wife's office, so I make the appointment like it in in the two o'clock area, and then when she gets off at three, we just go home together, right? So anyway, I'm. And, uh, I'm I've, I, I've, I've made an appointment with a physical therapist. Uh, um, uh, let me see here. And that's, that, that was my exciting day. That was excitement for me today. And then I went to the gym and I pedaled to nowhere for 30 minutes. And I went on a couple of the implements of torture and did, uh, did some crunching and some muscling and things like that. And then I went home and I took a shower. And uh, then I... Uh, Oh, then I spent, uh, let's see here, this is a good one. I spent an hour with uh, Jack uh, Bishop, uh, showing him how to use a new uh, piece of software that we have. And you know what's great? I'll tell you, you know, we've always, we always joke, joke about Jack not really being very good at technology, and, and I don't hold that against him. He's an old man, and uh, he's intimidated by it, you know. It doesn't work for him just right. And the reason it doesn't work for him just right is because he doesn't know how to use it. So I got this new program, right? Uh, we had a thing called Log Me In, uh, which I used for maybe three, four years. When I first got it, it was 99 bucks for the year. Then the price went up to 150 Then the next year, the price went to 250 And then I get a notice that, hey, we're renewing you automatically at... Three hundred and fifty dollars, and I went. There's got to be a, you know, it's got to be a better way of doing this. So I go online, and within five minutes, I find a thing called Remote PC, and you can download a demo copy of it. So I download a demo copy of it, and I try it. It works beautifully. It does all the things we have to do. You know, all my people can go online to my computer here and place their shows in the playlist, and they can put their shows in the folder and do all of that and start and stop the uh, the encoder that sends the signal out so it and it's very simple and it does exactly what log me in does now log me in may do more but i don't need any of that shit but this thing but this thing also gives me like 10 machines i can put this thing on so uh and guess what you know how much it is for the first year six dollars and 95 cents I just saved myself three hundred and like forty three dollars, forty four dollars, something like that. Uh, and the second year, it's it's uh, sixty is sixty nine ninety five. So big fucking deal. It's still a big difference from those thieves over at Log Me In. So, but what it does is, is is I put all my computers on it so that I can go to any of my computers from anywhere in the world and operate it like I was sitting right in front of it. And that's what, essentially what they do. And I have my own passwords they don't know for all those other machines, but for GabNet they have the thing and they can go on there. Well, uh, 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 Damien did it easy peasy. Just, you know, Damien just did it. That was it. it was, he said it was very simple, no problem. Now the big test is Jack because Jack is like, uh, and I, I'm, I'm putting him down for that. You know, a lot of people are not into technology. So today, what I did is I made one of those machines that I can go to his. So I went online and showed him how to use the whole thing by going online, flicking the mouse, logging in, showing him how to do stuff. And now, anytime he has a problem on his show and he doesn't know how to fix it, I can simply here just go to his machine remotely and, and play with it. So that's another benefit for $6.95. You know, for 350 bucks, you better send somebody out to blow me. Okay? All right? Okay. Anyway, I got something I want to play tonight, and, and what happened, I, I put this up on my Facebook page, but a lot of you may not have seen it, and if you've seen it, you probably enjoy seeing it again. Um, we had a birthday party, they had a birthday, we, my, our, uh, 
uh, uh, friend uh, Natalia uh, had a birthday for her lover and the person she cares about more than any in the world, uh, J Jack Garfine, who I've had on this show and has told a story about being in the concentration camps and so on, and he had a birthday. 88 years old, folks. 88. All right? And he decided to start giving a little speech because he loves making speeches and he loves teaching. You know, he lives to teach and direct and, and give people uh, a sense of history as well. And he started talking to the group, and I had my little iPhone, my new iPhone, recording this in 4K, although I'm not showing to you in 4K because it takes up way too much bandwidth. Uh, and uh, I thought you might want to see uh, what he had to say, so let's take about 13 minutes it takes, and then we'll see on the other side of this. He came from the back country. He never saw a show, even in the old country. And, and we were to, he'd be together in Bergen-Belsen, we were liberated there. He a few years older than I was. He used to bring me water, food, all that. And then both came to America. And uh, I didn't see him for quite a while. So one day after a matinee performance of Girls of Summer, I'm walking down Broadway and there is Alexander. I said, Alexander, hi, what are you doing? He didn't know, he thought directors were like conductors, that they're there at the performance. So he said, I went, I tried to see you, but you weren't there. I said, no, no, directors don't do that. And he said, how do you feel, Jack? I said, how do I feel? I have a flop on Broadway. <laughs> he said, Jack, how wonderful. <laughs> Remember 1945? Someone would say to you, you can have a flop on Broadway, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and then I've told the story, and so my friends have used it a lot. Like, for example, uh, after my getting my divorce, uh, I separated, I had to sleep on the couch and uh, saw the kids every once in a while. And Howard is one of my best friends just called me to say, well, how are you doing, Jack? I said, oh, I sleep on a couch. I don't know where I'm going to go. Jack, 45, you're going to be in Paris sleeping on a couch, Jack. <laughs> so in a sense, I have that as a kind of a steady thing. But recently, um, what happened was interesting because you've been reading about the children being taken away and they compared some of that to Auschwitz, you know. Well, it's not so, it's not the same. Uh, in a sense, I don't mean to, <laughs> I wanna give you specifics. In a way, what my mother did was astonishing. Uh, you see, if, if she had wanted to hold on to me, as they, they do here, and upset that the kid was taken away, I don't know if I would have made it. What she did was, if you didn't see the documentary. What you did was, she said, I never wanted to have you. I hated you. Get away from me, I never want to see you again. Pushed me away so that I, I stood there and I, my thought was, I hope she drops dead. If not, I hope I die. I didn't realize what an amazing thing she did. Sure. Instead of saying I want to hold on to a kid, and I'm being taken away, the kind of trauma that would cause, whereas she knew that she had to break and make me feel like what I was losing was, was not that was taken away, but she's the one that hated me. And I went through the entire war in a way of hating her. And people always say, why don't you talk about your mother? I'd never talk. So in this room are two people two people who, who have affected my life. So in France, I did a production of Kafka's Address to the Academy. I did the adaptation and I directed it. And the reason I did it is because I found an epilogue. And in the epilogue, 
what was wonderful is that uh, no one knew there was an epilogue, you know. Even one woman came to me and said, oh, you wrote the epilogue. I said, yes, I wish I, wish I had, you know. <laughs> but it's an ape who became human. And he tells the academy how he became human. At the end of the lecture, a fan comes into his hotel room and says to him, you know, I'm standing next to you. You don't look like anything of an ape of anything. And the guy opens his shirt and he says, here, smell me here. And the guy says, well, your nose must be better than mine because all I see is something human, you know. And then the guy says to him, you know something? I hate humanity, not individual human beings, but humanity as a whole I hate. And I realized why I wanted to do that production because I had the same thing. Even in the camp, I was in a death march and one of the guards took his rifle, put it under my arm and carried me. And at that point, if you thought the motorbike guys came along, if they thought you were weak or couldn't make it, they would shoot you. And he said to me, now you stand up and walk straight, I'll come back later and I'll carry you. And I did manage it and he did do it. But in this room are two people too who have affected my life in a deep way. One is Jack Terrell. Uh, what was amazing is he did it in the lobby of a theater. Jack is also a survivor. We were never together in the camp, but I met him later, a few years ago here in, in New York. So they gave me a tribute at the uh, film forum for my films, and there was a Q&A. And after that, they wanted to know how I made it through and all that. And I told them, well, in LA, I was in analysis four years every day, you know. And uh, I said, and finally, when it was, I had to go to New York, the analyst asked me, what did you learn from all this? And uh, I said, well, that, you know, I don't have to be afraid, people are gonna kill me, that, uh, you know, I can make progress. He said, no, 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 Jack. You came here because of a divorce. I want to know what you feel about women, about a woman, right? And I said, well, I couldn't answer. I said, let me think about it and I'll come back. I came back two weeks later and I said, you have to help me. I know you don't want to word it, but you have to tell me. He said to me, Jack, you were 13 years old you, you, when you were in Auschwitz. You couldn't save your sister who was 10 years old. Stop being attracted to women you want to save, okay? So I lived with that, I told that story. There was an intermission. I go into the hall, Jack, who is a famous analyst in New York, came up to me and said, well, uh, that analyst, Jack, was on the right track. He didn't get it right, Jack. I said, what do you mean? Well, it's not your sister. It's your mother. I can imagine. I could hardly go back. And I realized my terrible relationship in a way even with women that after that that I didn't not only didn't trust because many loved me, but I I didn't recognize that love. They were able to love me and able to, you know. For example, one woman in, in, in France uh, and, I, and she knew that I couldn't love back. We broke up at one point. And then about 10 years ago, I, and I thought, I said to Natalia, I said, you know, I realized that that woman loved me. And I had no idea, I could have no sense. And I'm teaching a class and the door opens. And who is there? 
she's there. And she says, oh, I'm sorry to disturb you, Jack. I'm in the cafe and I saw your name. I'm here with my kids. I'd love to talk to you. So I went and I talked to her and I said, Elizabeth, I wanted to tell you how sorry I am about the way I treated you. I just feel awful. And so she said to me, Jack, I understood. It's the war, Jack. I understood that. And I realized that there were so many women that loved me. And some just rejected me, of course, normal. And, uh, and so uh, all happened in a way I began to realize that I have a real problem in relation to that because Jack made me aware about the real love that I had and the real love that was given to me by my mother. And so I went through life without dealing with the emotions and the feelings that, that I went through until the second person in this room. I met Natalia and suddenly things came out I hadn't thought of. I, it, it came through in my work, but as far as my life, I never dealt with it. I never, 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 never dealt with the idea of the love of what you can build with, a, what, what a woman can do to you, you know? Because obviously that incident in Auschwitz, you know, my mother pushing me away that way, I was 13. And I felt she preferred my sister because she stayed with my, with my, with my sister. And so what, what happened with Natalia now, it goes on the fact that I experienced things I never knew because I was a kid when all this happened. I only knew I had a feeling. What it was I didn't understand, okay? For example, they were doing a documentary and they found the first apartment that I went to in New York to my uncle's house, you know, <laughs> and so, uh, and they, and so uh, Yitzhak Perlman's son now owns the apartment. When they told him that I had been there and I wanted to see it again, and he said, oh, absolutely, he knew about me. He was happy that he could do it. I walked into the apartment, something I would have never realized. I walked into the apartment, and I suddenly felt, I said, my God, I slept on the couch. And he looked at me and said, what? He slept on the couch? He didn't have a bed or anything? I said, no, no, after a while, they put me into a rooming house. You know, I no longer stayed there. But I suddenly realized when I was there in that room, the fact of what happened to me when I came to America because when my uncle got in touch with me in Sweden, I thought I would have a family again, It'd be wonderful. And so when I arrived, I couldn't end up in New York because there was a storm, so I couldn't see the, the Statue of Liberty. So I was told my uncle will be in, in, at Penn Station. And then I arrived with, with a guy from the charity organization my uncle was there. I think he just maybe didn't even kiss me, just sort of maybe embraced me. And I suddenly realized, oh my God, in Sweden, I was a kid who had gone through the camps and I was heroic like a soldier who had gone through the war. And here through my uncle, I suddenly realized, oh, I've, I'm a refugee. I have no money, I'm no family, nobody. I, and I didn't know that. All I knew was the feeling, but this time, all these things became very specific to me, what, in a sense of what I had to cope with. And, uh, and what's remarkable about what she's brought me is that almost every day, something new comes up in our life where I realize things about my life that I could never articulate, that through her I opened up and I'm able to trust a woman in terms of the deepest part of my life and what that has given me in return, you know, as a human being. So this is a birthday 
that I said, for the first time, I see things through her that I never saw before. And I thank you for coming. Wow. Mm. Powerful stuff uh, from, a, from an amazing man. You know, I'm very fortunate that I've gotten to know Jack Garfine uh, over the year, over the last year or so. It's only been a year that I've known him. But I've gotten to know a guy who uh, is a great joy uh, in my life. And uh, 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 just listening to him talk, a lot of those stories, if you, if you listen to the interview we did with him, a little bit of that was in those interviews. He, there are things he repeats a lot, but this is a man who, who suffered a great deal and survived a great deal and was uh, one of the preeminent uh, directors in theater in New York City, had directed two fine films, uh, but couldn't get along with Hollywood. Uh, he's a man who has a, a strong will and uh, I love him. I just love the guy. And he's going to come back here. I've talked to him, and I, I, I keep wanting to make the call, but I'm trying to find the time to do it because it, it is it's difficult for me in a way. Uh, but he wants to come back and tell the rest of the story of his life, and that part of his life had nothing to do with concentration camps. It had to do with being a director on Broadway and uh, having people uh, in the theater, uh, you know, working with a life in the theater and the people he knew. He knew the two Millers. He knew Henry Miller and he knew uh, Arthur Miller. He knew Bertolt Brecht. I mean, he, 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 his, his uh, uh, who wrote Waiting for Godot, he knew him. Uh, it, it just Samuel Beckett. Uh, he, the people he knew, the people who he hung out with, James Dean, he discovered. Marilyn Monroe, he was her confidant. Uh, just some amazing stories, and hopefully he will be here to, to tell those stories. Anyway, I, as some of you may have noticed, I have opened the lines. There is no fill tonight, so it's a fill-free evening. So, as we always like to say, feel free to call. Yuck, 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 yuck. Uh, but we would love to hear from you, all of you, uh, and I could use uh, I, I could use your help tonight because we're we're shy one person, well, actually shy a second person, person who always comes to my rescue whenever I say, well, it's a fill free night is Tom Yamaguchi, but Tom has something he has to do tonight, so you know I I don't want to sit here talking to myself, I want to talk to you, and if you want to, we we'd like to have some new uh, people to talk to as well. How you do that, go over to um, gabnet.net, G-A-B-N-E-T dot net, N-E-T, <laughs> gabnet.net, and uh, look at the page. And uh, You won't miss the show because it's playing there right now. O over on the right-hand side of the page uh, is, uh, is a whole tutorial on how you can use Skype and so on. And it would be uh, fun of you to um, uh, give it a try, okay, and, and join us. Uh, here, here's, uh, oh, well, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. You got a lot of, oh, yeah, oh, now you don't have, you have some internet connection problem. There's a problem with the internet connection between you two. Hold on while we try to get the call back. Well, you're there. I don't know what their problem is, but that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the way of all... Uh, of of uh, of Skype, ladies and gentlemen, Charlene Martinez. Hello, Charlene. How are you? Oh, I guess I'm all right. You, 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 I, I had a swallow. Oh, I don't have the thing with me. Little clear camera, like in a little capsule, and I had to take an anti nausea pill. I took it because I don't want to vomit, right? So, and I had to swallow this big worst thing, but it, it went down. Yeah. There's a big and now I have to like retrieve yeah. it when it comes out. There's a big light in back of you, and it's oh, like glaring sorry. like Turn crazy. Yeah, well, yeah, you got lights all over. It's a problem. Yeah, my my laptop is um messed up. I got a cheap laptop, and I'm afraid, it, you know, that that camera might be worse than this. Well, no, the, ca the camera's good. 
camera's good. It's your, your, probably your bandwidth is the problem. Hello there, <laughs> Jeff. How are you this evening? Great. Yeah. Jeff Stein. And not only that, I'm I'm home in Connecticut today. <laughs> oh, oh, you're finally back, huh? Finally <laughs> back. Uh, we just had a short time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, wifeless tonight and tomorrow and Sunday ah. and Monday. So I'm I'm inviting all my girlfriends over, and uh, we're gonna live it up while she's gone. You know. You know, Alex. You said my bandwidth. My son bought this monster gaming computer. Yeah. They delivered it today. Yeah. It's humongous. I thought it was like, you know, like this, it's the size of in the old days, the guy would buy a big amp or something. That's what it is. You just told me what he's using up all my bandwidth now. Wait a minute. It's a game machine? Yeah. I'll try to find out what kind it is. No, I think he needs a rehab for gaming. It's not an Xbox or a PlayStation. No, this is like a. A regular computer, but the, the like the hard drive part of it is huge. No, I know what I know what it is. What it is is it's a machine that's that is configured for gaming, uh, and uh, they, they call them things like monsters, and they have names for them like that. And um, what they do is they're just loaded with really high end graphics cards, high end uh, memory, and so on, so that they're really powerful machines. Meanwhile, I sit there ruining my thumbs playing on the uh, PlayStation, so, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But, oh, yeah. Alex, um, oh, God, something was very, um, it, oh, with Phil, with his denting, and uh, it's interesting to me because, you know, I'm starting to, like, get all these pills now and all that. So the waiting room here. <laughs> well, what is it? What is it? it uh, you know, I, I got to say that I, I, I really thank you people for being there because when I start griping, I, I'm a hypochondriac, as you know. When I start griping about my ailments, I feel like such an asshole because when I sum it all up, the numb feet is about the only thing that's really bothering me. You know, Alex, extent. I'm going to the uh, neurologist. I have to, I had to reschedule. Yeah. And you're helping me because maybe it's something in the back. But, you know, I'm going to go to the neurologist and see what they say. By the way, by the way, just a little hint. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, you ever been to a neurologist? Yes. Yeah. They ask you questions, don't they, to try and see how you react to the questions, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Your, your bandwidth's a little weird because you're like... Um, hmm. st st uh, stip uh, stopping and starting a little bit there. You know. Maybe it's this bug. I mean, just unset it. What? What? what, what that better? You, oh yeah, that's much better. What? What? What'd you do? Uh, it's, it's, I just, I just unplugged and replugged the uh, wire. It's a little better. It's a little better. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. So they he asked, I told the story already. He asked me a bunch of things. You know, where, where do you live? What's your age? Mm -hmm. Uh, who's your wife, you know, to see how my cognitive abilities are. And he says, who's president of the United States? And I said, Donald Trump. He said, who's the governor of, of, of New York? Yes. And, and I froze up. <laughs> and then to add insult to injury, he says, okay, how about the mayor of New York? And now I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I have Alzheimer's and like my mother used to be when she was trying to recall something, right? Mm-hmm. And it embarrassed me because, you know, of course, Cuomo and, and de Blasio, but I don't talk about them that much. Here. No, I think you're right, right. Alex. You don't but anyway, talk about local New York stuff. That might be what it is. A a anyway, he then ha does a report on, on what happened with me and him. And in the report, it's now written in stone that I don't know Cuomo and I don't know de Blasio. He oh, put it right? in the notes. So now I call sh my friend Shecky. And he went to a neurologist the other day for something. And he said, oh, he asked me the same questions. He asked me who the president was and so on. But he didn't ask me about Cuomo or, or de Blasio. I said, well, you see, I, they, asked, they gave me the harder test. <laughs> so what I think is they always ask these questions of people, neurologists, to see how cognitive they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Uh, they, they do that to you in the nursing home, too. My aunt used to get questioned. Yeah. Oh, how far did you go in high school? And, you know, they remember these uh, three 
uh, chair, table, book, and then they wait 10 minutes and say, what were those three words again? Yeah. <laughs> they do yeah. tricky right. things like that. Yeah. Hey, Jason, how are you? I'm a doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're uh, you're on you're on the loose. Your wife has let you out. Let you hey. join us. Yeah, she tells me I have to be good. I talk too loud. So. Oh really? Yeah, my kid's right above me, trying to sleep, and I'm always too loud when I'm on here. Oh, I see. Okay. This is the time when my son gets on that computer, and he starts playing and screaming and cursing and. Wah! I'm like, oh my. God. I I try to figure out, you know, I mean. For instance, we were talking about cognitive abilities, all right, and cognition. I wonder if playing video games helps you keep your brain going or whether it just puts it into, into a dull sleep of some sort. I don't know. You know, I play this one game on my iPad. It's called Slither. It's kind of like the old snake game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I always... You know, I'll use it as my sobriety test. You know, a night I've been having a couple of drinks, I might play it just to see, you know, hey, how good am I? You know, if I start doing really bad, I'm like, all right, I can't have another drink because I can't even, you know, do this or whatever. But it's, it's, it's you know, it's good brain work, you know, being quick about but, it. But I'm, stuff, I'm but. wondering if it helps my brain because, like, when I do it for an extended period of time, I get pretty loopy. You know, because I like playing the, uh, like, Tomb Raider. Uh, and there's another one called Uncharted. And these are games where you're climbing up hills and jumping across things and grabbing ledges. And then you're shooting bad guys. And there's a whole bunch of action where you're using, of course, your thumbs to do the whole damn thing. And, do you play Destiny at all? And by the way, I also find that it's, like, I'm playing and all of a sudden it's five hours later. It's like time just disappears. Oh, wow. You know? Do you ever play Destiny? Destiny? I have a copy of it I was playing. Is that the... It's like takes place on a space station or an outer space? Yeah, like different planets or whatever. Yeah, Some yeah. Earth. It's first-person shooter. It's a good game. I like yeah, it. Yeah, um, I'll tell you, I, I like first-person shooters, but I, I also like the ones where you have to solve puzzles and you have to yeah. you climb up walls and jump over things and and so on uh but uh, like I, I i i'm in my third time playing the same tomb raider game but i up the level each time <laughs> and i'm at a place where i just i always get stuck and i just have to get off of it for a couple of about a week and then come back to it where she's on a, in a um, in a parachute and is having to avoid trees as she's you know, and if you don't avoid them right, she gets stabbed with the tree, right? And I can't get through it. I, I'll almost get there, almost get there, and boom, into a tree. It's all just a pattern. It is yeah. a pattern. You know, Alex. The way those programs are designed is to ultimately uh, you fail. No, you actually, I, like, I, finished, I finished the whole Tomb Raider game. In fact, I, it was a, a version that I played... And then I gave up on because there was this final challenge that I just couldn't get through. And this time, I just poured through it. I had to go through the whole game. You know, I had to spend 12 hours playing the whole game to get to that point again. And I got past that point. I actually finished the game. I actually got to the credits. You know? <laughs> so um, I felt pretty good. You know? Felt pretty good. Well, uh, I was talking to him a lot. I got to see my doctors today. Mm -hmm. So one of the discussions was uh, about cognitive uh, understanding. Yeah. Okay. And getting older and and, and how things change. Yeah. And uh, the doctor told me, he says, you know, his father uh, was getting older. And so they have this program at Yale. Uh, where they test you, same kind of stuff that you're talking about, same questions, so forth. But they take the same questions and they do them again in six months or a year, mm -hmm. and they con continuously try to see whether or not you're you're getting any better or worse or the or standard. Yeah. And I go, well, I don't know if that makes life any better for me or for you. <laughs> I don't know. 
But he said, well, that's what he's doing with his father. Yeah. Well, all, all I know is that, like Betty Davis said, getting old ain't for sissies. Uh, and, uh, uh, he, he, but I, I keep thinking, oh, gee, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in terrible shape. My feet are hurting, and then I got the torn meniscus and whatever. And then I listen to you guys, and hell, you had a fucking stroke. And Alex, and Phil's a mess, and Kevin has had a bad f uh, a foot that might have to be amputated. And, of course, we have Patrick. You know, below the waist, there's nothing That's working right. there. Uh, you know, and I'm going, and I'm sitting here boo-hooing about my fucking numb feet. You know, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm like it's you. I go crazy, and the doctors think I'm nuts. They like look at me like she's crazy, worrying about her numb feet, but it bothers me. <laughs> I will say so, something. To, oh, yes, yes, Jason. I was going to say, I'm like a week behind or so. I know uh, last I heard, Phil was talking about going in for his stent. How'd that go? He had the stent, and then they said there may be some more blockage in back of the heart, so they're sending him to another hospital where they're going to do, do more on him. And but Alex, I think it was that hundred percent blockage. It, it was he had a and that one did he have a hundred percent blockage in yes, that one? He I had think 200%. so. Two hundred percent. No, you can't have two hundred percent blockage. No, you, but I mean yeah. like one two valves. Oh no. And the other one they're going to work on is a hundred percent too. And it, that was when everybody was telling him, "Don't have a steak, don't eat anything until they unblock you." Right? Uh, you yeah, because wasn't that what killed his dad? Was his heart? Or no, no, you know, his dad had a heart transplant or something, didn't he? I don't, I can't remember now. I'll have to ask. And then it was the infections that got him afterwards but, or something. But the thing is that, you know, I mean, I worry about Phil because I, I want them to get that new stent yeah. in him and clear it up, you know, uh, so that he, I mean, he was already looking better, you know. From the prostate stuff. No, no, he's looking better from the, from the stent. But, so, I mean, he just went through that whole prostate thing. Well, they have prostate happens, right? removed. You know, it's, it, it, this is the year in which it, it's like I was likening it to a car mechanic who you go into because you need to have a, some new tires. And before you get out of there, he's put in a whole new engine. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who do you work for? Oh, I know you can afford more than that. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is wrong, too. And, and, and it's uh -huh. like this is the year of doctors attacking him. You know, yeah. yes. Pa uh, yes, uh, Jeff. I, I remember at the beginning was uh we had a discussion with him, and, and he was like, I don't want to go to a doctor, and uh, and I go to such and such a program, and they haven't called me. They, you know, they, they don't think I need anything. And yeah. I said, Phil, you're crazy. you got problems. you really got a lot to do. And uh, I was so happy that uh, he's had two surgeries so far. Yeah. And, and every time we see him, he's better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's only had one surgery on the heart. Uh, yeah. But he had the prostate removal. Prostate you also know. was a big thing for him, But, too. I mean, uh, you know, so I sit around and go, gee, I'm just such a pussy. What am I, what am I, what am I belly aching about? What am I worried about? And the other day, I actually, maybe working out has something to do with it. I started walking down, down the street, and although my feet were hurting from this condition I've got, uh, I was there was a little pep in my step, and I was going, you know, <laughs> actually, all things considered, uh, 78, uh, I could be where a lot of my other friends are in a grave somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, Alex, you look good. You lost some weight. You look good. Some. And now I lost 55 pounds, yeah. you know. But I mean, I'll tell you something, uh, and uh, I, I'm not saying this just for your benefit, Charlene, but for everybody's benefit, if you can do it lose weight if you can take weight off it is going to do a lot for you it's going to change everything i mean i i find for instance i'm not winded anymore you know i remember i would i'd go up a flight of subway stairs and i'd be winded when i got to the top and i thought that was just normal you know well after losing the weight i don't i don't i'm not losing my breath so i i think losing weight is very important and people go well, it's really difficult. Yes and no. You know, if you just put your mind to it, if you figure, hey, this is going to save my life, you lose weight. You know, yeah. Alex, too, I would 
I'd suggest to you, I know you have your feet problem and maybe neuropathy or whatever. No, it's but not neuropathy. Also, it's not neuropathy. It's been, that's been invest, ruled out. Invest in a good pair of shoes. Oh, mm. <laughs> Yeah, I have a good pair of shoes. I have several good comfy pairs. shoes. Yeah. No, but the not, thing not, is, not the, necessarily comfy no. shoes, but good yeah. shoes. Like but I, uh, he, 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 he ruled out neuropathy. It's not neuropathy. It is simply a pinched nerve. Chiropractor. No, uh, I asked him about that. Okay, because you know I have this aversion to chiropractors, as you know. Girlfriend goes to a chiropractor regularly and says, oh, my back feels so great. And then I said, well, why did you go back the next week if it was feeling so great? Uh, you know, and she, it, uh, I asked the doctor, I said, I, my wife is going to give me a bad time and say, why don't you go see the chiropractor? I said, would a chiropractor do me any good? And he said, for what you have, I would rather you see a physical therapist. Uh, because uh, uh, a chiropractor might, in the way they do things, uh, take a pinched nerve or whatever and put it out of, completely out of whack. They could do more damage than they could do help. So could a physical therapist if they tell you to do the wrong exercises. Well, a physical therapist, this isn't going to really be so much exercises as it's going to be kneading of the flesh. There's not much I can do in the way of exercise to take care of this back and I'm already doing exercises at the gym so there, there's specific exercises for individual issues but you know like, like I told you and it, it was it's been over a month now that we went on strike for like you know six days and I was out walking the picket line and I was walking probably about 15 miles every day yeah and my left thigh I still have a numb spot Wow. And I went to my doctor and she said, well, do you have lower back pain? I said, yeah. She goes, so it's probably inflammation. Yeah, you probably did overdo it. And I said, well, now it's been like two or three weeks. She goes, give it another two or three weeks. And it's already been that. And it's like if I stretch the wrong way, it feels like my muscle is ripping. You know, but then I have this numb spot. You know, so she, they're even telling me, you know, it's either you have inflammation in your leg that's pinching your nerve mm -hmm. or it's inflammation in your back that's pinching your nerve yeah. but there's going to be certain exercises that would help or certain stretches and spinal decompression where the nerve might be pinched at would help too yeah yeah well i mean all i'm saying is so i'm going to the physical therapist i went to this guy for my uh it, torn meniscus and he did make it better he didn't clear it up completely because it's never going to clear up completely but uh uh, so I'm going to see what this guy can do. And if that doesn't work, we go to plan B, whatever that is, you know. But apparently what he saw in the x-rays is arthritis in my spine, and the arthritis mm -hmm. is causing a nerve to be pinched. And that nerve is making my feet numb. And when I lie down, it gets worse, you know, because I'm lying on my back. So, uh, you know, when I'm sitting here for several hours, they go numb too. So anyway, that, that's a, you know, it's not going to kill me. It's, it, it, maybe it impinges on my quality of life a little, but it's not going to kill me, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. At Costco, they sell, it's, uh, uh, was it some flex? <clears throat> it's a glucosamine oh. chondroitin combo. Osteobiflex. Wait yeah. a minute. Hold on. I take it every day for my back. It Wait, helps good. a lot. Yeah, Wait. it's for arthritis. Wait a second. Phil is calling? Phil, yes. What, yes. What, what happened to your photo meeting? I, I, and I was advertising this as a Phil-free night. Now everybody's going to call me a fucking liar like Trump. Yeah. Fake news, fake news. Fake, fake. Uh, I, I've been overdoing it. I just decided that I'm, I was going to lay down for a while. And I was listening. And I figured I'd call in with my, uh, with my ailments. <laughs> you know? Well, you, you mm -hmm. right now are a Petri dish. Uh, I will be. Uh, they just ordered up for me a urinalysis, a special one, uh, that they look to grow some sort of culture in, and they uh, uh, see if they can detect any uh, cancer cells. They call it the Trump urine test. They bring in a hooker, and you pee on her. Right. <laughs> but, uh, so where would they be suspecting uh, cancer, then? Uh, bladder. But uh, I've had a number of tests that have come out clear. So this is just uh, you know oh, one boy. more. So well, why? Also, you've had you had the prostate operation that, that has yeah. to have some kind of effect on that area. Well, I had some blood in my urine a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, I 
I believe that it was just uh, I was, was a little that after your stint. Uh, no, it was before. Well, I'll tell you, I've got I've got stool in my blood. Is that bad? <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, but uh, well, I sit on a stool when I. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna cha- <laughs> You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change this show to just a medical show. Yeah, right. With, right. A right. medical right. show yeah. with no doctors, just people with opinions of what's wrong with you. You can yeah. call up and you can say, "This right. is what I got," and then everybody on the panel can go, "Well, I had that once, and what it was was such and such." Alex, I used to love the politics, but now it's like I like the medical. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did a CT scan on me earlier this week. Yeah. And, uh, they did one a year ago, so they compared it. And when they did the cystoscopy, uh, they had found that you, I had You can't some, pronounce uh, any of these medical procedures. It's cystoscopy. Mm. They, they stuck something up my prick. And they put a <laughs> stint in you, not a stint. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's cystoscopy. So uh, anyway, uh, when they did the cystoscopy as well as uh, cystoscopy, yeah, they they yeah. said that uh, my bladder walls were thick. So were you, we, we we went through this last night. Let, right. Let, let's not well, try and repeat to, our ailments and stuff. I you spoke know. to the urologist uh, tonight. Yeah. And uh, he said that. Um, uh, whatever he had thought he saw on the earlier one is gone, so uh, that was good news. But he he just wanted to do one more test in another cystoscopy. Cis- oh, he wants yeah. to stick that camera up your dick again. Dick yeah. again. That's yeah. one of the most pleasant things they've ever done to me. And by the way, just to be doubly sadistic, they don't put you out. I was going to ask if they put you out. No. I'm going to bring my own pill with me. How long does it hurt? Like, I is thought it 10 hurt. It's or? just uncomfortable for like 30 seconds. Well, part of it, part of the, it's uncomfortable, but the worst part of it is you know what the fuck they're doing. And when mm-hmm. I went into the doctor's office, when I went into the place where they were going to do it, he had it kind of covered by a towel. But it wasn't completely covering it. And I could see this huge anaconda-like piece of equipment that was going to go up my penis. Uh-huh. You know? And then they put, they, put a, they put an anesthetic in your penis. They, sh- they don't shoot it up. They, they flush you up with this anesthetic. Wow. It takes about a couple of minutes. To, they don't stay in very long. Yes, Jason. Yeah, they so- give you that, oh, you'll feel a little pressure bullshit. Yeah. So, so this is, this, time- no, this is going to pinch a bit. I went yeah. in, I was having a, like a burning sensation every once in a while when I was taking a piss. And I was like, dude, I better get checked out and see if I have an STD. So I went to the doctor, you know, they take this Q-tip and they like shove it down my penis. And I'm thinking like, oh, this is going to hurt so bad. When they shoved it in, I was like, oh, dude, that wasn't bad. You know, that's good. And when they pulled it out, that's when it fucking <laughs> hurt so bad. You Came out negative. Say, I didn't have never nothing. say that. <laughs> but, oh well, my God, well, I, I, I I've told the story. I've, I've told the story before how once I came down on uh, on a weekend with the clap. Now uh, you always get the clap on the weekend, you know, when there are no doctors to go to. So I ran down to the public health department. I figured they know better than anybody about the this clap stuff. Clap clinic. Yeah, yeah, and and I go down there and and I'm sitting there. Uh, this is absolutely true. I am sitting there, and there somebody had written something on the back of the seat in front of me, and it read, Bob was here and will be back. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, 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 I go and see this doctor. Uh-oh. Who did that? The clap. Oh, I see. Oh, gee. It sounded like, I don't know, a river or something. I don't know what no, that sounded like. Uh, it was an audience clap. A- a- anyway, audience. anyway, so I... Uh, uh, so I go and see the doctor, and he says, "Oh, you've got." A, he says, "I don't know if you have the clap. I think you might have NSU, which was nonspecific urethritis, which, you know, is not good either." Uh, we want. We got to do a little examination here. Pardon me, but would you mind? We have a, a, a couple of students uh, in from Japan, oh, and geez. we'd like them to see how we do a a, 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 a thing. You know. Um, uh, an inspection or a you know observation or whatever he was doing to me, and I said, uh, w- "Would you mind if if we brought them in?" 
And I thought to myself, and I went, at least I can do something for science. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so he said, uh, pull down your pants. And I pulled down my pants, and he says, okay, you can come in now. And, cut 20, the cameras. and 20 guys with cameras oh, come in. Uh, cut the cameras. <laughs> 20 guys, 20 Japanese guys with cameras. <laughs> the cameras didn't go click, click. They went crick, crick. And um, <laughs> crick, crick. I'm standing there with my dick in, in, in the hands of this doctor, and I'm going, you know, I really should be getting paid porn wages for this, you know? Can I get a fluffer first? Yeah, yeah. I, I was... Uh, I swear You know, Alex, do you remember the old days when fireworks were not, like, illegal in New York? You'd go through Chinatown, and they go, fire caca, fire caca. Yeah. <laughs> Did I they want to pose that. with you, Alex? That was no, no, it now. wasn't. Those, those were the days before selfies. Yeah, I, was okay. say, oh, selfies? <laughs> you know? I would have loved to have had a selfie of me and all the uh, just the whole background, nothing but ch Japanese, uh, 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 I guess, doctors. Uh, but uh, so that, uh, it was on 9th oh, Street. Do you know, selfie, do, Mr. Alex. Did you know the place on 9th Street, Phil? Uh, 9th Street. The, the, no. the public the health clinic? public health clinic. Yeah. No, I, I've never. I, I can't say that I've been there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or it's, even it, knew somebody that had been. Yeah. He never got Phil, any Phil used the one had I had recently yeah. ago. Yeah. I don't know. In those days, I used to get the clap occasionally. I don't know why. Alex, did that get all messed up with political stuff now? That, like, say, you know, like nowadays, like I remember. <laughs> They had like the red door was like a woman's clinic for stuff like that years ago in mm. New York. It was, but you know, like, did that all get messed up now because of what's going on with closing I, all stuff for people? And uh, well, no, I mean, we, uh, we're, well, I mean, we're not closing down uh, uh, health departments, you know, mm. we're not doing stuff like that. You're probably thinking about like Planned Parenthood in some states. Which oh, in the case, the health department. well, in the yeah, in the case of Planned Parenthood, they don't just do abortions. In fact, that's only about what five percent of what they do. It's a very small percentage of what they do. No, but I remember being in New York, and you know, something like that happened to me. You know, on the woman's side, and I went to like the Nana Health Clinic downtown. You know, it was mm. a Spanish clinic. Yeah, I'm in there, and I don't speak any Spanish, <laughs> and I'm in there at the health clinic, and you know, I don't know what's going on. I'll never forget that. That was years ago. Yeah, but yeah. I wonder if that still exists. What's your what last name of Martinez, and you don't speak any Spanish? Oh, well, that was before I was Martinez. You know? <laughs> she married. She married. She married a Martinez, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh. But I, I, you know, I, I had taken high school Spanish, so that would just get me in trouble. But you, you know, know all the dirty words, right? Oh yeah, when you hang around Mexicans, you learn all the real good ones. Yeah. Right? Right, right, right. I had to go over and get my. This is uh, my Flonase. Uh, oh, what is, I do Flonase too. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's all right. And Zyrtec is that bad? To do Flonase I've run out of it. No, I've run out of it. I, I only have about another twenty bottles of this shit. So I, you know. How come there's white powder coming out of that? <laughs> I don't know, but I. Burn your nose like cocaine. Then his eyes dilate. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I t just took a hit of Flonase. Uh, Dave's not here, man. <laughs> Dave's not <laughs> here, <laughs> man. Oh boy. So I mean, it was. It's. It's. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, yes, folks, we, we talk about healthier. Look at these people. They're not exactly <laughs> youngsters, except for Jason, and he's a kid. Yeah. How old are you now, Jason? 30 I'll be 38 30 oh baby <laughs> he's the baby of the crowd he he hasn't even come to that point in life where he's going to start having to be concerned about these he you know he hasn't had what become, becomes a passage of of time for people is your first colonoscopy right oh, I've had colonoscopy before I've had two really why yeah. why no that was Bruce yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, I I had it was called a fistula before. Yeah, it was basically the, the like fistula. a deep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it was basically like a deep pimple in my butt. Oh, I see. <laughs> and uh, so there was blood once in a while, and they wanted to do a colonoscopy to make sure it wasn't something else. And 
and it was nothing. That's why I always tell well, everybody. Colonoscopies you know, are nothing. But I mean, I, uh, it's, it is a, pa- a rite of passage. Now, my problem was you should have your first one at 50, and I had my first one at 65. Shoot, I had my first one at like 32. And I was like polyp city. I had like three or four polyps. You know. They told me I was like clean as a whistle. Yeah. I've been taking so fiber. Pick- well, you have to clean yourself out the night before, and I had my doctor on at least more than one occasion say, boy, you cleaned yourself out very well last night. <laughs> and, and, and I kind of go like, do I get a gold star on my card? I, you see, know? The biggest wow. thing I was worried about that I was going to shit myself after the colonoscopy <laughs> no, because no, I was no, still no. a little leaky. No, here, right no, here's the one you worry about. What you have to do is you have to take this stuff uh, uh, at night. And then the next day I had to, uh, because I, I take this little bottle of stuff rather than that gallon of stuff you have to drink that's what i want yeah, to i had to i had to redo it the next day the next morning before i went down and i was afraid of shitting my pants in the cab <laughs> that's what i was worried about <laughs> magnesium citrate so, magnesium was, citrate that. that's exactly what it is Mag- yeah, thank you very much what so Alex, magnesium citrate t- uh, tastes great you know, hey. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, there's, uh, there's Ray, but he's upside down. Alex, I'm upside down. Yeah, well, you're, side, you're sideways, off. even though you're in the panorama yeah. mode. So I now guess okay. do, do it that way. Yeah, do it that. How way. How weird. I don't know. It's, it's not orienting itself the other Alex. way. So what was that stuff? What was the Called name of that stuff? Magnesium citrate. Because I went down to pick up my shit again. That yeah. stuff. Yeah. Hundred and seventeen bucks this time. What? Yeah, I told them to shove it up their ass, literally. Dude, I just took the, I, I bought a bottle of Metamucil or whatever, and they tell me just to uh, keep on taking that with Gatorade. Well, no, well I looked at that. And I looked that online, and they said it didn't really do a good job. And I don't want to go back I again. Do yeah, Miralax. Well, I mean, well, M- Miralax yeah. is what I took as a chaser. Yeah, okay. well, I didn't want to do that because a lot of people said but that they magnesium had to go back citrate. For a round. You're absolutely right. Thank you very much, Charlene. Get magnesium citrate. Two bottles. You take one the night before. You take one the next morning when you wake up. Uh, you're com- and you're completely cleaned out. And it, it and it was ninety nine cents a bottle. Yeah, ninety nine cents a bottle. And it tastes and, and, and it and, and it doesn't taste bad. If you just uh, what I did is I ate that. I put it in ginger ale or something. I put it in something, and I just just chugged it, chug lugged it down. I, I just mix mine with Gatorade because it keeps you hydrated. Yeah. Because you're yeah. towards the end, you're just shit and piss. Basically. And what I love is just about an hour later, uh, you go, uh, you know something, um, um, uh, nothing's happening yet. And two hours later, you can't get oh, off the goddamn uh-uh. can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You yeah, because you. because I had gone down there once and they 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 were gonna charge me fifty bucks for it, and my wife left it. They said go get this coupon, so I went and got the coupon. I went down there today, and she says, okay, it was one hundred and seventeen bucks. Insurance is paying three bucks. What? And your your part is forty seven, and I went bullshit. Uh, so I left it. Talk said, to your yeah, doctor. That's, that's Talk to your doctor to and say, "Is it okay if I use magnesium citrate?" And he'll probably yeah, that, say, "Yeah, that's what yes. I'm doing." Because I'm not even scheduled yet, so I left it all behind and said, "I'll figure tell something him you'll, else out." Tell him you'll do the magnesium citrate. You hear it works beautifully. It's worked every time for me. I, as I say, I got that review from my doctor saying, "Yeah, you're really clean in there." Magnesium. I had to do both citrate. because. Yeah, I forgot to fast, so I had to do both. I had to do magnesium citrate and the one they give you. Oh, really? I, I just don't want to go back for a second one. So, well, yeah. well, you know something? This is getting us a hell of an audience tonight. Uh, <laughs> I, I I can't believe that it's getting us a hell of an audience. Had well, a prep had a to to uh, we're just sitting around talking shit, you know. <laughs> yeah. well, next time I have a colonoscopy, what I should do is probably take this stuff on the do air and then you know <laughs> keep running off to the bathroom. Yeah, we could we could uh, you know do like Barry said, you know, do the rocket, you know, the pretend like we're rockets. The well, space well, what did he say? You, you take this yeah, stuff and then, like you, spa- then you have shuttle. to you have to have a seat belt for your toilet so that you, yeah. <laughs> you, you don't. We should all, you know, what we should do is all time our colonoscopy so we have them on the same night. Well, here, here's what I wanted. And then we could all. Here's what I wanted to do. You, colonoscopy goes up the ass, right? Looks at looks at your rectum. 
colonoscopy goes up your ass, uh, the uh, uh, cystoscopy goes up your penis, and then there's a the thing that goes down endoscopy. your throat, is end endoscopy, which goes down your throat. I wanted to have them all scheduled at the same time and all three doctors show up at the same time and do it all at once and see if they can see each other. Let's see who can take it. <laughs> How much do you charge <laughs> Hey, I'd be scared to do any of that. Hey, Phil, are you all right? Okay. And then check yeah. your eardrums, too. About He's quiet. Here we go. What, what, what were you saying, uh, Phil? I was just reading about the prep. Everything I'm reading says... Uh, uh, take uh, Miralax and yeah, uh, Miralax. What I did, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I've, I, I read those, but some of some of the people said that they're they they didn't get cleaned out enough, and they got sent back for another one. They had to go back. Yeah, yeah. I I could, uh, he he gave me let me take this magnesium citrate, and then in the morning I took the Miralax or no, I, I actually he gave me some pills to take along with another dose of oh, the magnesium Dulcolax. Dulcolax along with the magnesium sulfate, and that did it, you know. Citrate, rather. Don't take magnesium sulfate. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, you know. Uh, so, folks, you know, it, it, a lot of people watching. I, I can't believe this. Boy, this hey. is a whole new format. Shit your pants. Yeah. <laughs> Shit your pants with Alex Bennett. I asked him to get... I asked them to give me less medicine last time so I could watch the whole thing, and they did. How long does it take? Does it take a long time? No, no it's like a half hour. But it, but it, what happens is they give you no, they put you out. Oh, good. They give you they give you they give you what Michael Jackson died from. So you don't remember anything then? Oh, good. Uh, and it's like you know what it's like. I do. You, they give you, you a cigarette after it, too. No, no. <laughs> what happens is it's like you 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 hear you know you're you're there. And then you're waking up, and oh, wow. and it's, it's like wait a minute, it's like oh, yeah. wait a minute, hold on a second, it's like somebody edited the tape of your life and right. stuck oh, yeah. it together. So you wake up and you have no recollection of what happened. You have no recollection of going out, and yeah. you really don't have any recollection of waking up. It's just like you basically just feel fine. Thirty too. minutes of your life has no. disappeared. It's been edited and out of your life. The right, it's just it's just your hiney that's exposed, right? When they so, did the. I watched the whole thing. I, mean, I, I didn't go to sleep. Well, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Did you watch the whole colonoscopy? Or no, I, I had a, what's the I other one? I watched it. Yeah, I what's watched the other it. one? The lower colon. The, the lower colon, it's a what? A, 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 and a, a, a sigmoidoscopy. 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 That's what I had. Yeah, that that I stayed awake for. He, he said, you want to see it, you know, because that doesn't go up that far. The, the, you, the colonoscopy goes all the way. But they blow you up in. like a balloon. It, yeah, Ray, they just showed you. They just showed you a video of uh, Katie Couric. Ray, That's they made me into a balloon animal. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, 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 Jason. So well, the second time I went in for the colonoscopy, it was like I said. I had this fistula. It was like I said, basically a deep pimple in my butt, mm -hmm. and uh, they were so they were gonna flip me on my stomach to do the colonoscopy, and so they could look at this thing. So they ended up giving me a. Uh, uh, what is it called? Where they shoot shoot you in the back to numb you? Uh, 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 oh, an epidural. 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 They gave me an epidural. So I'm wondering, I'm like, so why are you giving me an epidural and then still knocking me out? Why? If, you know, I can't because feel. Because they don't it. want you to move. Oh really? I can't move. I'm paralyzed. <laughs> yeah, but but well, here's what I think. Like for for uh, colonoscopy, they don't give you enough usually to prevent you from completely moving like they would for normal surgery yeah you can actually still move around a little bit and uh, plus you probably would feel it yeah no i because yeah. i remember waking up and the first thing i reached down and grabbed my penis and i'm like i can't feel it it's, yeah it's i was so freaked out <laughs> yeah Really? The only yeah, th I, I was so scared. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, Charlene. Let's get this No, I was just gonna say somebody mentioned how they fill you up with the air. Oh. Now, I, I don't know about anybody else, but when the nurse comes over to me <clears> and says, you know, it's okay if you want to like release a lot of air because we put a lot of air in you. When I have to make all those horrible noises next to everybody in the I feel better because, you know, it's terrible, isn't it, after that? Oh, they won't let oh, you leave until God. you fart. 
they won't let you leave till you yeah. fart. <laughs> she's like, it's okay, you can release air. And then I feel like, oh, okay, now she said I could do it. I don't feel so when good. I had my epidural, they won't let me go until I peed. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah, well, that's mm-hmm. what happened when I did my knee surgery. They 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 numb you from the waist down, and well, you know, I, when I, I woke up, I was going, I can't feel my pee pee. <laughs> Phil, when you had your operation on the prostate, what they wouldn't let you leave until you took a took a real good piss, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, on the prostate, I was uh, in the hospital for a couple, I think a couple of days, yeah. but uh, with on the uh, uh, when they did the biopsy, mm-hmm. you had to pee. And then they checked you to see after you peed how much uh, was left in your bladder. Yeah. So, Phil, how long has it been since you had your prostate thing done? Three months. Oh, three and a half months. You get a boner yet? No. Damn. Uh, it could take a year. <sighs> yeah. For, I could take it, a twenty-two. It take, at it take that a point. year for it to get up, and then it takes about three minutes for it to go down. So it's you know, and, it, ooh. and then it's another year, you know. Uh, but at least you're healthy, though, Phil. When they, yeah, when they did the heart thing, uh, they gave me a drug called I think it was called fentanyl, and I, isn't that the same drug they give to uh, for lethal injection? Uh, yes. Oh, no, not fentanyl. Like no, like fentanyl. Like fentanyl. Like fentanyl. So but fentanyl uh, has been killing people uh, because it, it, they've been using it as yeah, a... Yeah, that's a uh, horse tranquilizer. They're using yeah. heroin now. Yeah. Uh, well, it, they, they use it in uh, along with other drugs to uh, for lethal injection for, uh, for you know, uh, death row prisoners. But, uh, you know, that's what... They gave me that part of it uh, for the heart catheterization. And I was awake. I felt good, and I didn't feel any pain. Well, that's the Michael Jackson drug. No, no, uh, no. Yeah. That's propofol. 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 Yeah, that's right. That's right. And they gave me propofol when I had the uh, prostate operation. Yeah, yeah. They, I was out. They, I mean, they God, I love this. I just love this. This is just a, just a deluge of medical stuff. He got a lot of medicine. Drugs, drugs, drugs. And drugs. you know who's keeping quiet? The guy who's had more profound. I just. Yeah, I'll no. Just keep it quiet. Is that a, the, 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 the most profound was, medical problems. Jeff is the winner. And, and you know what? Cool. I, I think some of you guys would maybe pass out or something. Really? What? I could some of them. I could. Not me. The craziest things that were most difficult. Uh, you, Jeff has you, a, he has a defibrillator. No, 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 I don't. I no, just, no. no. I have a oh, pacemaker. Here's a pacemaker. Yeah, like my brother, the pig mouth. Jeff listens to all of this stuff, and he says, been there, done that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yawn. Can we talk about something else? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Plus, Turn on your Alex, mic, Jeff. Jeff was in the business, too, right? Like, before well, you did it all? Yeah, yeah, I developed uh, a lot well, of what a coincidence surgical that is, right? he, de- he, he developed. He not only owned the company, he was a satisfied customer. Oh, like right. a hair club guy. <laughs> Just yeah. like the Sunbeam guy. Got a couple of items in the news today I'd like to bring up. Yeah. The question is now, what are they going to do at the Papa John company oh, is that too much? without Papa John? Did you see that? Now, I've known for years that this guy is a shithole. You know, uh, a shit heel. I've, that's why I've never bought his fucking pizza. Uh, a, a, he's a right wing shithole. And uh, he uh, he used the N word in a conference call in May. And it's amazing. In the old days, you used the N word on a conference call, and that wasn't, you know, you use the N word. Now you use the N word, and they take your name off a stadium. Okay, right. uh, there was a stadium in, where was it? Wherever this uh, That's right. It took place, uh, a, a, a college stadium, a name to Papa John Stadium. They've taken his name off of that. He's been Good. removed from the Papa John Company. He had to resign as chairman of the company. He probably still has money, you know, from it. But, of course, who's going to want to buy Papa John pizza now? And you can't, they can't what call they Papa can't John. figure out what to do is it's called Papa John's International Incorporated. It's called Papa John's Pizza. Uh, do they keep the name Papa John and just not use his visual as the spokesperson of the company? Or do you, you know, but it was named after him because his name is uh, John uh, Sh- Schnatter. 
uh, and uh, uh, they just don't know what to do. They say he remains on the board. He's still the company's largest shareholder, but Papa John's now must pivot the marketing campaign to not attach his identity to it. Mm. So it's like Jared from, uh, yeah. <coughs> what's the McCall, right? The, the uh, difference Jared is a child yeah. molester. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, but he kind of, he, he wasn't attached to it that much. You know? Well, yeah. just his face. like yeah. spokesperson. Yeah, spokesperson. Well, it was easy to get rid of him. Now, some marketing person says the difficulty Papa John's faces in pivoting the brand away from Schnatter is that they first need to treat this as a crisis and then redefine what their brand is and what it stands for. Well, how do you redefine it? It's already <laughs> shitty pizza. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. how do you, what, it's better pizza than it was? Um, shitty. They can change it from Papa John to Uncle Tom. They said the company oh, probably doesn't need a new name, shit. though. Full rebranding would even be more expensive than shooting new commercials and changing the pizza boxes and signage. They've got to change all the signage on all the Papa John stores across the country. I think country. we might have one down the street. Yeah. I've got to check this out. I didn't think of that. Is Black now. Sambo still available? Yeah, little I was going remember Little Black Sambo. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sambo's yeah. rest. Well, it was called Black Sambo's. Yeah. And then, then they decided that it, when there was a whole racial uproar back in the 50s, when these places were, you know, because it's the story of a little, remember the story of a little black Sambo who was a, uh, a, a native kid who, uh, to get away from a tiger, kept running around in a circle, and the, the guy, the tiger kept chasing him until he turned into butter. Now, how is that a racist story? It just isn't. It's just he's called Little Black Sambo. He wasn't even it called... It reminds me of Burr Rabbit. He wasn't even Burr called Rabbit. Little Colored Sambo or Little Negro Sambo. He was called Little Black Sambo. I mean, today, black is a proper term, okay? Yeah, but I think the, the graphics of it... Well, anyway... It, well, yeah, well, they, the had, they, had, they had a, they had a smiling black kid as racist. their logo. Anyway, they decided to change it to just Sambo's. Yeah. But somehow that didn't fly. So then they took the picture of the kid off, and that didn't fly. So eventually Sambo's just died. I can't remember. What did they serve? Hamburgers or something? Pancakes. It was Pancakes. like Denny's. Pancakes. Oh, right. Yeah, it was like Denny's or IHOP. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, how worse can uh, Papa John's be than Sambo's? <laughs> yeah. Uh, why did they take the Durr off the Durr Wiener schnitzel? Hey. Oh, did they take the Durr off of the Durr Wiener Schnitzel? Yeah, and now it's just Wiener Schnitzel. Huh. They took the Durr off a long time ago. Wow. I mean, yeah. But those Wiener, the Wiener Schnitzels to, to be any good. Uh, yeah. It used to be one in Mill Valley. Uh, now it's turned into a like, four-star restaurant. Oh, but it's no longer their Wiener Schnitzel. It's just the same building. Do you remember so, that one? Uh, 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 yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I go back so far. I don't remember Derwiner Schnitzel being there. Oh, it was there when you lived in Sausalito. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't eat out much in Sausalito. I'd go up the road, you know. So. Let me see here. So that's that's the big story. But what, is, what do the Papa John's people do? Now, Harvey Weinstein has uh, emerged. Did you read about this one? Good. I heard defending himself but i don't i didn't hear what he said basically he said in the interview that he offered acting jobs in exchange for sex but according to him so does everyone i, th <laughs> I, I think he's right on that you know I haven't. huh well you know it's just it, you're not a big enough producer well you wouldn't Ray. no you, i know you, you i know wouldn't. i'm not i know i'm not i'm just kidding <laughs> but no he said was, yes i did offer women no acting jobs in exchange for sex but so does everyone. However, the story appeared to change soon after the interview was published because the writer said that he had actually misquoted Weinstein. Uh, the writer backtracked and said, he said they may have understood the, uh, he said they may have misunderstood the 66-year-old. In a statement released following the story's publication, longtime spectator columnist Tacky Theater, uh, forget it, he's Greek, I can't pronounce the name, R uh, wrote, after 41 years as a spectator columnist without a single retraction, I believe that I may have misinterpreted Harvey Weinstein's conversation with me, and it was my mistake. He wasn't recording it, and he wasn't taking notes, okay? He wrote this by memory. 
Despite the statement, the article remained on the Spectator's website in its original form. The columnist claimed that Weinstein told him he never, ever forced himself on a single woman, but often had to use his Hollywood prowess to get girls. Uh, Weinstein is quoted in the Spectator piece telling Theodokarakopoulos, I'm not going to, thanks for having a name that long. Change it to Bob. Uh, you, were bo I, you were born rich and privileged, and you were handsome. I was born poor, ugly, Jewish, and had to fight all my life to get somewhere. You go, you go lots of girls. No girl looked at me until I was big in Hollywood. Uh, the post ad Weinstein was joined by his lawyer, and who was there at the time, and um, it was published in Spectator. Whenever uh, Ibrahman admitted that he was there, but claimed the statements published in the Spectator were never uttered. So uh, apparently, uh, and and this guy who interviewed him was his friend. So you know that's kind of interesting. What so that's the uglier than shit defense. I'm well, uglier than shit. I think. I think. Feel sorry I, for me. I, I, I think. Sorry. I think what he's saying. What he's saying. I mean, this is. We know this. I told you before. This is what's going to be his defense, eventually. Uh, yeah. You know. Um, poor, yeah. poor Harvey. Yeah. Poor Harvey. Yeah. That it's going. It's going to be his defense, and and his defense is going to be, hey, it was always consensual, you know. Uh, I, I never forced myself on anybody, you know. There was no rape involved. I wonder. I wonder. Sorry. Yeah. I wonder if in the trial, um, or whatever they have the hearing, uh, if, if they would be allowed to present something like, well, this actress had sex with these other three producers consensually, but she found them attractive, and so. That was okay. Well, I mean, there's the old later, which she regretted what she did. You know, there's the old argument about, you know, if it were George Clooney instead of Harvey Weinstein, exactly, would they have found it so disgusting? You know, exactly. I mean, it is the fact that Har I mean, is Harvey Weinstein guilty of being ugly? <laughs> I mean, really, I'm serious yes. about this. The ugly. Well, hey, he had to point out that he was Jewish too, though, right? Yeah, uh, and Jewish. You know, uh, I mean, but I mean, uh, uh, if, if if it were Brad Pitt, you know, would she have complained? Uh, or if it were Brad Pitt, would she just lay down there and spread her legs because it's Brad Pitt? Come on, Brad. You know, so I mean, uh, you know, Harvey Weinstein is a disgusting human being. And so if they felt they had to sleep with this guy in order to get a part in a movie, uh, 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 yeah, it, it was pretty a pretty disgusting thing. Uh, and and uh, but but uh, what the hell? Hello, Vernon Nunn. How are you, Vernon? Hello. Yeah, turn your camera on so we can see you. Uh, Phil okay. has his hand up. He, he, what? Phil has his hand up. Yes. Uh, hold on a second, Phil. Uh, Vernon, say hello in Morse code. Go ahead. There we go. Okay. Now I feel good about this. Okay. Well, almost a full house. One short of a full house. Uh, well, you guys were talking about uh, oh, wait uh, John Schnatter, yeah, right? Yeah, John John Schnatter lives on the outskirts of Louisville, Kentucky, and he contributed five million dollars to the construction of the University of New Louisville's new football stadium, and, and they called it Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Well, right. the board of directors and the new president right. just voted today to take Papa John's uh -huh. off the name of the stadium. Yep, I was mentioning that earlier, and it yeah. Well, not only that, does he, he get grew his... up in he grew up in Jeffersonville, Indiana, mm -hmm. which is right across the river, and there was a high school basketball arena that mm -hmm. had Papa John's on it that got removed. Also, does he get his money back? That's my question. No, no, no he does not. He uh, does not uh, get his money back. Phil had his hand up. What what is it, Phil? Mm. Well, uh, timing's a little tough, but uh, since Harvey Weinstein pulled the uh, Jewish card. Uh, do you think that's going to work for him? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I think what he, you know, I, look, I think it's amazing that he's willing to admit he's ugly, you know, <laughs> and that he's unattractive. And that the well, only it way he was. like I'm ugly because I'm a Jew. <laughs> and, he, and that he never got laid till he went into show business and became a mo movie mogul, you know. So I, uh, you know, I mean, uh, 
his defense, I think, is going to be, and I said this from the very beginning, that he's going to say that all these were consensual, that if women felt they were going to get a job because they fell, went and slept with Harvey Weinstein, then they did it. You know, that's going to be his excuse. Now, whether that's true or not, you know, I'm sure if, if Renee were here, she'd say, no, Harvey's full of shit, but, you know. It's the old adage, you know, mm. would you sleep with me for $500? And the woman says, oh, I wouldn't do that. A, well, how yeah. about for a million dollars? And then she says, well, maybe. You know, he says, now we know what you're... No, uh, no, you, you got it all wrong, Phil. Just got to right. find out the price. It was, it was, no, no, it, it was Winston Churchill, and he asked uh, some woman who was a, 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 a famous uh, debutante or whatever... Uh, would you would you sleep them with me for a thousand? Uh, if, would you sleep with me for a fifty dollars? And she said no. She said how about five hundred dollars? She said no. Now, how about ten thousand dollars? No. How about a hundred thousand dollars? She said well I might. Now, how about a million dollars? She says absolutely I'd sleep with you. What kind of uh, no? I know. I'm telling it wrong now. You. Okay. It's okay. the reverse. He says, "Would you go to sleep with me for a million dollars?" She says, "I suppose I would." Would you go to sleep with me for a thousand dollars? What kind of woman do you think I am? Well, we've established that already. We're just bickering about the price. No, that's, that's how the joke goes. All right. That's right. Okay. Reverse. Uh, you got to. You got to admit that my version is much better. Well, I think it's Churchill's version, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, uh, that's basically what, you know, the Weinstein defense is, mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, these, uh, these, these women, uh, basically prostituted themselves. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, uh, 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 Ray. Yeah. There, I mean, there is though an example of James Franco, who's a heartthrob. He, yeah, he was what's accused. going on with them? So, so there, you know, uh, cause they accused him too. And yeah, I haven't heard he's, anything and he's, about that. He's up there, the almost at the Brad Pitt level. I think. Didn't he almost <laughs> well, the, um, Golden Globe because of that, right? Yeah. Well, I think I'll tell yeah. you. I'll tell you something. I think that it, where where he was concerned, he got caught up at a time when just everybody was coming out. Whether they, yeah, I'm sure there were a lot of people that slept with George, John, uh, with James Franco who didn't complain. You know what I'm saying? That's true. You know, that's and true. That somebody, that's true. This some, was only like one person. Yeah. yeah, it was like one person. But it it, yeah. it has, has put it, it has stifled Franco's career a bit now as to whether it's going to be permanent or not. We'll have to see. Didn't the woman? I kind of liked him. I kind of liked it. Didn't the woman say? I know was wrong. This was a couple of years later. You know that she just felt uncomfortable. Uh, you know, uh, so she maybe we, she was having second thoughts about. The well, fact you know, uh, I, I to begin with, I I question the uh, the uh, these women who didn't at the time that these things occurred didn't make a big deal out of it. Maybe we could have stopped it from happening a lot earlier if they had simply yeah, opened their Alex, mouths. But they were isn't they it were like Rose McGowan they, and the other one. It was like twenty eight years ago or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I I I think that if they were truly brave, they would have made a big deal out of it back then. And then they reported it like last year. Or yeah, something, right? but you know, nevertheless, I mean, certainly that whole process was improper. But we knew it existed. Hell, I mean, when I was a kid growing up, I knew about the Hollywood casting couch. Mm. You know, uh, you, could, yeah. you could buy them at Raymore and Flanagan. Um, <laughs> I think that's a New York joke. Uh, is there Raymore and Flanagan out in California? In New Jersey, we have them. I'm laughing because okay. we have them. Ikea carries them now. Uh, Ikea carries casting couches, yeah. 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 So aisle nine. Yeah. But you got to assemble it yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, the, and then for B movies only. So listen, babe, uh, listen, uh, you can be in my movie, but first you're going to have to fuck me. But before we can do that, can you help me put this bed together? <laughs> it's got way too many screws. <laughs> you know how I put that? Ikea has those crazy names for all of their products. I wonder what the Ikea name would be for the casting couch. I don't know, but I've never been to an Ikea in my life, I'm proud to say. You know, I know people that are still lost trying to find their way to the exit. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they got, got footprints the on the floor, for Christ's yeah. sake. Footprints, lines. See, the I, I've never been to an Ikea. Don't yeah. eat those meatballs. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure my girlfriend with her taste, if I ever went close to an Ikea, would divorce me. You know. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't like cheap furniture. I'm out broke. <laughs> okay, here's another story. 
See, I'm doing prep now. How about that, huh? Huh? Did you drink it? Bernie Sanders what? has gone after Disney CEO Bob Iger. Oh. Sending wow. out a tweet pointing out the pay disparity at Disney. Here's the, here's the tweet. Does the Disney CEO Bob Iger have a good explanation for why he's being compensated more than $400 million while workers at Disneyland are homeless and relying on food stamps to feed their families? Does that mean Mickey gets more than many? Probably. <laughs> Probably. That would be funny. But, I mean, uh, 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 what, uh, uh, what do you think? I mean, you know, is one guy worth, I think the $400 million he's referring to is the $423 million that Iger is being given over four years to stay with Disney. Uh, she okay, would be subsidizing the employers. Making... What did you say? My, oh, my God. My daughter worked at Disney and, uh, in Anaheim. Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, you know, I mean, they're basic jobs. They're, you know, they're they're not CEOs of a multi-billion-dollar company. Qu but my question is: Is this guy worth four hundred and twenty-three million dollars? Probably not. But that's what you know. That's what he was able to negotiate. So, but if, that's at the know, expense. Power, that's the expense of giving other people raises, isn't it? He's, he's worth what they're willing to pay. The oh, head of the head of it's Sony. The 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 he me, it's not at the expense of someone else. That's what the, they're willing. Uh, the head to of pay. Sony once said, "The trouble with America is you do not pay your top executive more than ten times what your lower executive is getting paid." That's Sony. Well, that's you know, Japan. That's Asian hey. thinking on it. Yes, uh, uh, Jason. We should not be subsidizing employers. When you, you know, when somebody qualifies for welfare and they have a full-time job, you're subsidizing employment for that company. Yes. That's and not you right. remember who was famous for doing that? It was Walmart. Walmart. Walmart used to have in their HR department a section where people could go and find out how to get on food stamps. There are classes mm -hmm. on how to do it. Yeah. And, and people were saying that the biggest subsidizer of, of Walmart was the federal government. Wow. Yeah. That's why we need a good minimum wage. Yes, Ray. This is the guy at Disney that's been there forever, right? He's been there, yeah, I, quite a while. Yeah, yeah. So 20-something years ago, when I was in that in the financial field, 25 years or more, mm -hmm. this was an argument back then. He was making ridiculous money back then every year, and everyone was saying, oh, does he really deserve this? And every single that guy has so much money you can't even fathom. It's 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 disgusting. I'm, I I think in Europe they don't put up with it. I think there are laws against it in France. The CEOs cannot make more than the one the least paid employee a certain. Well, you, you know you know who was very good at this was the guy who started Costco. He died a couple of years ago. Did he? Wow. I thought he just retired. I think I think he retired then. I think he died. I may be wrong. But anyway, Do we I don't know remember him. He, 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 didn't, he didn't take... Uh, the, the people started uh, at Costco at uh, $35,000 or 37500 a year. Everybody, if you work full-time, with full yep. medical benefits. All right? He said, I, ne I never will take more than 10 times what they're making. So he paid himself $370,000 a year. Or uh, stock options. Well, I mean, he had yes, stock but, options, but he started the company. So but yeah. give him credit for that. But he didn't take a salary that was more than that because he said, I don't need a bigger salary. What do I need a bigger salary for? I've got the stock and everything else. And, and come on, you know, I want to be on a certain parity with my employees. Yes, Jason. I'm sorry, I have just a real quick bitch. I have bought Costco jeans, Kirkland brand jeans, yeah. for years for my work. Yeah. Loved them. They've always been made in Mexico, but now they moved them over to China. They don't last as long. They suck. Really? <laughs> no. Uh, yes, That's good to know. And if they were made by Trump, they'd grab your crotch. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 Ray. Ray. Yeah, yeah. So, so many years ago when I worked at the same company, I uh, there was Mr. Price, and then there was the guy who started Costco. Where there's Price Costco, yeah, and there's Price Club, yeah. 
and they were both the same. They were both like that, and I knew the, the secretaries for both these companies who worked for the, the CEOs, and the, and um, the, the respect for these guys within the company was tremendous. Everyone loved them, everyone, and that's why when you go to a Costco and places like that, people seem to like their jobs. You know, you don't see a lot of people moping around. They feel like they're being treated fairly. Yeah, you don't see people who look unhappy. You know, no. they don't. It, no. it, it, you it, never it, find anybody it. at these places, let alone, you know, I mean, they're behind the cash register. But if you're walking around looking for help, it's uh, yeah, Costco. I can always find them. And they're always wholesale. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yes. Least, Charlene. At least stores, all you had to do was find the guy on the ladder and he couldn't get away. Uh, Charlene. I, I, don't, I hope I'm not getting off topic, but do, did you already talk about, like, Kylie Jenner, isn't it? Yeah. Is going to be on Forbes magazine, and she's, like, the, uh, like a, a billionaire, and she makes more money than Zuckerberg. No, no, no she doesn't make more money that? than Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg no, she's about is to be, she, yeah, she's about she's to be a billion dollars. She's the richest woman in the world she's, at her age. Like, or she's the youngest like person yeah, to yeah. be a billionaire on her own. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In history, like yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Tony. You know that's why getting back to the to, to the pay and stuff like that you were saying about like a working wage. That's why I actually think that it should be in law. I hate to say it like that, but where each year a company, if you're a full time worker or a part time worker, you should actually get it should be mandatory to give you like a cost of living raise. Like they have to give you a certain percentage. Because companies don't want to do even do that. No, no, you know, uh, and it's it's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. Let them eat cake. Yeah, yeah but like, Phil, would you agree with that? Where they'd have to make it mandatory, like you get a cost of living raise, right into law. Uh, of, of course. How of, about it's been you were productive been years. and you earn a raise? Hey, Phil, we are more oh, the please. production that we have well, done in America. Does, Phil, does Phil, close. you know, it's, it's, it's far very, outpaces it, in the it, wages that it, we make. It, it's very nice of you to say that, Phil, but you don't have to work a drudge job like some of these other people, you know. There oh. hasn't been an increase in years on the minimum wage. It's awful. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, 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 Vernon. And then uh, Jason. You, you know, the, the tax cut that was passed back in December, some companies have increased the uh, starting wage for uh, new hires and Home Depot where I work part-time was one of those companies however people who have been working there for years did not get the same dollar an hour bump mm -hmm. that the starting people did that's and right. that's left a sour taste in the mouth of a lot of employees yeah. yes Jason mm -hmm. so th this I kind of want to just ask Phil do you think that there is a job out there that you could work full time and still qualify for welfare. Yeah, my job. <laughs> I'm I'm being a, an honest, serious question. Should I, there I, be a job absolutely. out there that you work full time and still be able to qualify for welfare? Well, it depends. I mean, if you live in uh, if the, you're a teenager, I, no. Look, you ask me a question. Uh, if you live in like an area where I live, it's very expensive to live here. Uh, if you live in some other areas of the country, it's not as expensive, and maybe the uh, welfare a, well, doesn't matter about that. Now, uh, yes, but for instance, if somebody is working and they take a part-time job, now you said full-time, but full -time. let me, you know, uh, but they take a job and they can't get a job that is going to give them the same pay they had before, and it's going to be under a certain amount. They're able to get uh, unemployment uh, the benefits. Uh, you know, to supplement uh, that. And you know what? The welfare is a safety net. And if somebody is in a position where they can't get a job that's going to pay them what they need to live, that's what the safety net is for. And I have no... You're avoiding the question. No, I, I answered it, which is, yes, I, I feel that if they have a job and the job is not giving them a living wage, uh, but... But uh, should that job exist? You know, should you be able to have a job that some job you're, you're working full time, full time and be able to qualify for welfare? It, some jobs have to exist and some jobs, that's all they pay. And if you live in an area where it costs you more to live and you need uh, uh, government assistance, 
There should be no reason you could if I lived in Detroit or if I lived in Los Angeles, it's not gonna. I don't think that's a difference of qualifying for welfare if, versus uh, how much if, I make. If somebody pays shit wages, and they Just and jump. they are paying their employees shit wages, and then those people have to go out and get welfare, their company is really being subsidized by you and me. Yeah. Uh, what is shit wages? Could it be less than the minimum wage? I think less than the minimum wage. wage. Listen, it, listen, I work for a company, months. Sirius XM. Yeah. Had people working there full time. Okay. Or sometimes they didn't make them go full time. They let them work uh, 30 hours a week so they didn't have to give them anything. You know, they have to give them health or whatever. But if they got a full time job, you're paying them like thirty-five thousand dollars a year now. Maybe that's okay in buttfuck Indiana, right? Not New York. But when yet. you're living in New York or even in New Jersey and have to commute every day, thirty-five thousand dollars a year. Give me a fucking break. What What is the one thing, the one factor that this thirty-five thousand dollar a year job produces? The one factor is they don't have to take it. They can stay in New Jersey and get a job for $75,000, but it's not going to be working at Sirius XM. They might have to be working at, uh, at, a, at a carpet store. Yeah, but, I, but, I, I, but we're, no, we're talking about paying people they, a decent wage for the they work they're doing. They don't have to take the job. No, if but... If the job it, doesn't oh. pay what they want, the answer is don't take it. Well, so we should still limit our immigration to people who just want to be doctors and lawyers. Let me let me say engineers. this. Let me say this. Some people would take that job for thirty five thousand dollars a year because they want to get in the broadcasting business, and so they take the money. I don't see the difference between that and fucking Harvey Weinstein for a well, movie 30, role. Thirty-five thousand dollars a year does not get you I, welfare, I, no I, matter where you I, live I, in the yeah, country. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see that there's any difference between. Taking advantage of somebody who wants to be in the business and paying him cheap wages, and Harvey Weinstein saying, fuck me and I'll put you in my movie. That's the decision that those people made, the ones that slept with old Harvey and the ones that worked for Sirius. They made a decision. Nobody twisted their arm. That was worth hey, it to them. Hey, a, you know, it, is, it is to the benefit of a company to pay decent wages, Phil. Yeah. Not everybody I, has know, the cognitive ability as every other person. Some people, you know, have learning disabilities where they can't do stuff. Well, that's and they can still work. Also, there's they some people. Still there's work some people. There's some people that don't have negotiating power either. You know, that's it's just that thirty-five thousand dollars. You that you're thirty-five thousand dollars a year. You're talking twice the poverty level. Well, so I'm talking about somebody who's only making fifteen thousand dollars a year. Do you know what there the, are people hey, who are making fifteen hey, thousand dollars hey, a year hey, or working full Jason, time? No matter. Are you, you ready to get up. frightened? Do you know? Mm-hmm. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what uh, what a, 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 a low a low wage is in the San Fr- in San Francisco now? Yeah, you, I do. Yeah, because I, I may get yeah. no. Uh, you're in the poverty level if you're under ninety two thousand dollars of the family look for. Wow. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was higher than that. I thought it was something like one hundred and five thousand. Well, that's uh, that's if that it depends. Uh, San Francisco is one hundred and five. The south, the rest of the area is ninety two. So, in other words, you make under ninety two thousand dollars. You're below the poverty level. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you're considered low. Wait, so, are you bef- below the poverty level? That's a family of four. It, yes, I am. See. <laughs> So uh, yeah, and of course, this is why we can't ever go out to dinner. We can't go on vacation. We can't improve anything our house, and uh, we can't basically do anything. Yeah, how long have you owned your house in Palo Alto? Okay, that's a different issue, Phil. Okay, (laughs) I have a lot of investment and I have a lot of equity, but my income that I have to live on every day is below the poverty level. I can't can't, like take out pieces of of my house. What? Isn't that because of the uh, cost of living, mainly the yes. housing costs? It's yeah. a cost of living is absurd here. Yes, exactly. I mean, you yeah. go to a, Wait a minute. you go uh, to you go yeah. out to a restaurant or something. It costs uh, fifty to hundred percent more than it does anywhere else. It's like new. It's like Manhattan almost. Yeah. Uh, t- 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 Tony has his hand up. Yes, well, you know, I wanted to tell you something, Alex. I was telling Mr. Shecky when they visited him, I was going to ask some, but I'll tell you too, Alex. They're talking about like how expensive it is. 
me and my brother and my sister, we were thinking about, well, they're thinking about buying a house. My brother wants to retire maybe in Delaware get a house because you know what you do? They don't, you know, in Delaware, Alex, I was reading on it, they don't, they don't tax your social security and it's low. I mean, I know it's the state taxes are low. We don't want to, you know. So they were thinking about down the road maybe getting a house that we could get. Yeah, but the government still taxes your social security. Can you say no? I was going to ask you. I got to ask Chucky. It's no. the state. It's the, the state. state don't the tax. state taxed, but here in New York, the state of New York doesn't doesn't uh, uh, tax your social security. Oh, Michigan I does. I was on Delaware. I don't hear. Did he ever move out of San Francisco? I don't know. But in New York, it, uh, it doesn't. They don't. They don't. Um, they don't Michigan tax. does, thanks to our Republican governor. You know, the Republicans want to raise the taxes on everybody. Yeah. They ain't in California no. either. I can't retire. I have to uh, work until I drop dead. Uh, but you could retire. Well, my wife. Hey, but my Phil, wife. Just think my about wife. Health my wife. It won't be too long. My wife yeah. is still working. <laughs> right. You know, thank God she's got a great job and working for great people. But she's still working. And I'd still be working if I could find a job. I just don't, uh, I know I can't find one. It, it'd be useless of me to waste Same my here. time. Yeah, it'd be useless of me to even even do it. They would laugh me out of any radio station I would walk into, or they go, "Great meeting an old pro like you, Alex." Yeah. I mean, think about that. But you're not going to work for thirty-five thousand dollars a year. Alex, if you were working in radio now in San Francisco, can you imagine how much money you'd be making? Because look what poverty is there now, 92 grand. Do you know what I'd be making? In San Francisco, I'd be lucky if I was making like fifty to $60,000 a year. And that's the problem, is that it's... it's no, but it's say fast years ago to now, though. See, all you, you guys, good. all you guys are complaining that wages are low, they've been stagnant for... No, many, things just get expensive, though. It's it's Good jobs have gone out of the country. It's because there's no manufacturing here. It's because they've they've uh, they've just eviscerated. Uh, uh, Phil, the economy. Phil, can Phil, I disagree with that? That's, 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 that's a complete. Uh, that, building that, cars in Detroit. That's a complete now. lie, Phil. 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 Bring all those fifteen dollar an hour jobs back so we can buy our eighty dollar no, pizzas. They were, they were thirty and forty dollar an hour jobs. And they're no, gone. they were. They were oh, never. Bullshit. You bring them you, back. You want to know the truth that. about something, Phil? They well, you, you, they opened up. You, they opened up a couple of steel plants that were dormant. Okay. Yeah. And they can't find people to work them. That's. I understand because they don't pay enough. Uh, oh well, okay. All right, bingo. You he just said it. You bingo. Said it. You just made you our go. point, Phil. But that choosing other fields, other other fields to work in. Uh, you know, there's there Phil, are you just you just up. said that they, the European the other people are stealing our jobs. There are places that actually want to hire people that they can't get any people to work for them. Yes, Jason. That's because they've Jason. decimated the industry. <clears throat> Phil, I have a good union job, and I make forty dollars an hour. All I right. hear other people tell me that you shouldn't make forty dollars an hour. Money. Because that's too much money. That's okay. why their I bills are so high. But forty dollars an hour is what people should be making. Which union is Back that? Back in the way? day, people used to say, "Oh, you work for the union? How can I get my kid or how can I get my husband into the union?" Now they're saying, "Oh, you work for the union? You make too much money." What Fuck union? What say, union? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What union do you belong to? CWA. Oh, okay. Because I'm a, I I'm a Honorary withdrawal from the IBEW, which I figured maybe you were IBEW. They're, they're fairly similar, Communication yeah. Workers of America. Yeah. But people sit there and they want anybody who's making a decent living now, they want to sit there and tell you, you're not worth it. You shouldn't make that much money because I don't make that much money. But back well, in the day, it used to be, oh, you, you know, I don't make that much money and you do. How do I get into that? Yeah. And the whole, the whole the scheme of things is just so wrong now. You say they're that greedy, they, they don't want people to make money. They want people to know what their place in their businesses. Don't give them too much because then they'll leave. Sorry, you were saying something, Phil. So, yeah, I mean, I just wonder why you know lawyers charge five hundred and twenty-five dollars an hour. You know, I mean, forty is very nice, but five hundred and twenty-five an hour is even better. It's a little bit of a mine, difference. Mine only charges. So being a business owner, would you pay an installer that much? You can always go to the Jacoby Myers, Phil. Sometimes, I mean, I I pay them. Uh, by the yard, so the more they produce, the more they make, and it's not uncommon for them to make 500 bucks a day. You know why he gets 500 an hour. 
you can go to the guy who gets a hundred, but if you go to the guy for five hundred, I bet you get you what you want. I nobody's out there for a hundred anymore. Oh, uh, it's two hundred. But you know why the big shots get the big money? Hey, Phil, you going through a divorce? You got to go to the good lawyer, I guess. I got to hide that money, real well, good. Well, my uh, <laughs> my lawyer's charging us out at I think it's four hundred a dollars an hour. Right. Yeah. You know what they do is they look at the complaint and on there it says how much the other lawyer is charging. So they just. <laughs> well, I told you about my old lawyer uh, years ago. Who, oh, third, baby, Mr. Third. Turtle. Mr. Turtle, who's, who I sent him a birth. I called him up and wished him a happy birthday and I got a bill for it. Two, <laughs> third, two thirds. Yeah, I, cha- I I got rid of Mr. Turtle because the name just wasn't good to take into court. And so I went out and got this is, this is true. No. Absolute truth. I went out and got. Mr. Reamer. Mm-hmm. Now yeah, that's a good yeah, name for a lawyer. Not Mr. Turtle, because you don't say to somebody, you, you fuck with me, you're going to have to talk to my lawyer. <laughs> Mr. Turtle. You know. Every yeah. time you say Mr. Turtle, I think of this, oh, the uh, Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was Mr. Uh, Reamer's mother's name? Uh, sure, her name was Reamer, too. She went into biz, she had a divorce firm. And she had a divorce firm with someone else, and it was called the divorce firm of Skinner and Reamer. <laughs> she told my mother that she would like, she watch you by mistake. Keep your zipper up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great name, great name well, for a law. Wasn't there? Wasn't there a a, a Mr. Mr. Turtle cartoon? Mr. Turtle had like a Mr. Turtle. I'm thinking wasn't. of the hair. Didn't they, the turtle and the rabbit race? Yeah, right. Warner right. Brothers. Well, Mitch McConnell, you remember, ever remember in comic books, he's, he had to draw the turtle and get oh, a, yeah, yeah, a scholarship. Right. You can draw yeah. it. Uh, actually, you could send a picture of Mitch McConnell and still get the scholarship. You know. Yeah. <laughs> He looked just like the turtle. Or, See, that's the joke, they, folks. He looked just guy. like the turtle. See, listen, oh, I remember only, that radio I only have show, one. Uh, 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 auto, the, what was it called? The the, the car talk on, on PBS? Yeah. Yeah. Click yeah. and clack. Click and clack. Click and clack, yeah. At the very end, they always do their their credits, and, and their, their law firm was Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. that's been around for, that joke's been around for years. Anyway, uh, I just, one <laughs> final little thing that uh, went through my mind today, and we haven't got time to discuss it, and I'm sure it'll drive Phil crazy. Did you notice the demonstrators in uh, London today against Trump? Oh, did you get my video? D- uh, uh, yeah, but I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it. Didn't they know? But anyway, let me, let me just finish my comment. Uh, it se- appeared to me that there were more people at that demonstration than showed up for Trump's inauguration. No, oh, yeah. it was the biggest inauguration ever in the history of the United <laughs> States. Didn't they know Trump wasn't in London? Hey, and then he, he tweeted out, big what? success, big success. What was big think? success, best inauguration what, what did you ever, say, Phil? Period, hmm. enthusiastic. What, what, this, this is the new one. Well, that's the new one? Yeah, it came today. Yeah, okay, so... Just plug the mic right into your computer. Yeah, exactly. Does it- Did you see the Justice Department is appealing the AT&T Time Warner yeah, deal? Yeah, I was going to bring that up, but uh, I, I figured that you'd want to talk about it, but uh, we didn't get around to it. Uh, but anyway, hey, listen. Well, listen, I'm doing a lot of AT&T business. I got the iPhone X, and I got the new iPad, and, you know. You're Thank paying you for the own business. Have, you're paying for uh, Jason to have a forty dollar an hour job. That's right, and I'm happy <laughs> Thank for you. it. Hey, listen, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, it's been a I fun night. I wish you night. would too, Phil. It's been a fun <laughs> night. We hardly got into politics at all. Wait I went minute. Verizon. Wait a minute. What happened to? Oh, I played the wrong theme. That's what it was. I was playing. I was playing Michael <laughs> Snyder's theme. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, that's Who's it for that? tonight. I gotta go. Uh, listen, uh, it's been wonderful, everybody. It's been a great one. And uh, I want all of you to, uh, well, there's Jeff and there's uh, Jason and there's Phil. He just hung up on us. Uh, there's Ray. Uh, there's uh, Charlene. There's Kevin. There's Tony. There's Vernon. Thank you all, everyone. Give a big uh, wave goodbye so they can say goodbye to you. That's our citizens panel. That's what they look like. Okay. And there they go. And with just a click of a button, I can get rid of them all. Huh? Uh, don't you wish life were like that? Let me get rid of. Uh, let me get it ready for the next show, which is the intersection with uh, Jack Bishop. I hope you'll uh, call him, uh, just like you called me tonight, and give him a good, rich show. Uh, I will. Uh, let's see here. At uh, one o'clock this morning, it's Connections, 
And then uh, next Tuesday, we come back with our programming again, starting, of course, with Damian Chaplin and The Exchange. Followed at 10 o'clock by me, Alex Bennett, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.